Good afternoon, July 1, 2015. We're getting ready to fire it up out of Detroit, Michigan. Uh, we have our regular uh, co-host on Wednesday, Sister Beverly D. Are you there? Yes, I am. Yes, Happy Sister. How are you today? July, whoever, whoever celebrates it. All right. All right. July 1. Uh, yes. How are you today? I'm great. How are you? Uh, pretty good. Pretty good. I'm I'm getting good. a little better in my health and in my works. I've been really tied up, or better yet, backed up in my works, getting out some DVDs and doing some research. And so much is going on now uh, lately, Bev. It's it's kind of hard to keep up. You know what I mean? Yeah. In the land. Yeah. The, the the age of Aquarius, so you know every day there's a new awakening. Yep. Yes, it is. Yep. So uh, tell me about your shows. Uh, what do you got scheduled coming up uh, on your regular Sunday show or whatever? You got something anything uh-huh. special? Well, I, I my um, changed Sunday to Monday and Tuesday, and on Mondays and Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I have Brother Robert X out of Chicago, Illinois. And so he's breaking things down as far as metaphysically with that CERN uh, machine that's going on and and the different connections with uh, the Bible, you know, what the Bible really means as far as his understanding is that the Bible is a healing book. It's not talking about peoples. It's talking about parts of your body. So uh, every uh, Monday and Tuesday, we have that show going. Oh, okay. So he's on both days? Yes. He's, yes. Okay. Okay. That's good. That's good. Okay. Um, there's some information uh, that I'm going to get to you on the um, the United Nations and the water uh, situation. Okay. I had I got an email from uh, the sisters that are uh, struggling with that package, and uh, I'm going to forward it out to you. Okay. Okay. Great. Well. All right. Well, yesterday, Bev, um, I did a, a, my show yesterday, and I talked about uh, uh, what did I talk about? <laughs> Mercy. <laughs> it, it's, Wait. It's it. <laughs> I, I forgot I that had quick. Those moments. I had right. those moments. Yeah, I'm telling you. I uh, I I can't remember, but it's directly related to uh, w- uh, what's going on out there in uh, 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 that city down in uh, uh, Carolina. Uh, you talked about day, I know same I sex marriage. Did you talk same about sex same, marriage. Marriage. same sex marriage? I just couldn't think yeah. of it. Yes, same sex marriage and the relationship it has with Black America directly with Black America in that uh, we, it was set up, we were led to believe that the civil rights program was set up for us in regards to giving us our rights, and which we knew, it, well, it, it wasn't known to uh, uh, everyone, but they, we needed human rights, not civil rights. So now it's becoming quite clear that civil rights deals with fictitious entities, such as uh, same-sex marriage. The man and a man and man and woman and woman, which is totally ridiculous, you know. And that's where the Negro they put us in as Negroes. But the whole process of the last two uh, uh, giant steps in United States history is the fact of same-sex marriages, and now they're dealing with that Confederate flag. And tonight I wanted to deal with the Confederate flag in re- in relationship to the American flag. And uh, okay. it's very important that we understand that. Now, uh, uh, before 1940, no U.S. flag, civil flag, or military flag flew within within the 48 states, except on federal settings and installations. I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. It only flew where there was a federal building, such as the post office. Only state flags did. Since 1935, 
instituted the Social Security and the Buck Act, which I told you we need to do a program on the Buck Act, by clever legal maneuvering, the federal, the feds, federal government, or United States have entirely circumvented the United States Constitution and have overlaid federal territory jurisdiction on the sovereign states, bringing them under the admiralty military jurisdiction of law merchants, the union, I mean, the Uniform Commercial Code, and the law of creditors and debtors. So I'm, I'm stressing the fact that it's supporting my argument of today that we have never seen the original American flag. Bev, it's never flown that we know about. They never taught us about it. The flag that we are we think is the United States flag is nothing more than a war flag. Did you know that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Now you, a say war have, flag. you say we haven't seen the uh United States flag or we haven't seen America flag. We haven't seen the American peacetime flag. Okay. See when when they were doing their uh manipulating uh with uh, the after the Revolutionary War, supposedly after the Revolutionary War, they wanted everyone to know that they were a God-fearing, peace-loving, g- founding government that was going to lay peace on America. Now, no, remember, United States was the ones that fought the Revolutionary War. America did not fight the Revolutionary War. United States did because they were trying to pull away from England who sent them over here to set up the 13 colonies. So they needed a flag after the war, supposedly won. They supposedly won the war, but that's another uh, program altogether. There was a peace flag. I have a picture of it. I have a picture of the peace flag and you can uh, go to, let me, let me bring it up. It's a night. I never knew that it was a peace flag. Uh, Jonah Bay turned me on to it. I'm looking at it. It's called the United States Civil Flag of Peacetime. We, the people of the United States, actually have two national flags, a military flag, when I call a war flag, and the civil flag, which is the peacetime flag. They have several important distinctions and meanings. We're going to look at a few of those. Now, we got to understand that the southern states also have a flag or a supposed flag, which is fictitious, just like the American flag is fictitious. That's why I, 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 I label the program Confederate flag versus United States flag. Where do we stand in this? Where do we stand as Americans? Where do we stand in this? Okay. So now a Confederate flag that was supposedly used, I don't know how it got so confused, other than through the, the education books that United States set up and the, the, the crooked law that they set up. And I say crooked law because it was a bona fide law, but it was definitely against black people. Now, the law was against black people because black people owned majority of the land in the South. The Civil War was not fought under the guise of free and slavery, cotton fields, and all of that madness. That had nothing to do with the war itself. The Republican Party were trying to gain power to, to establish the United States under a, the Republican Party, which was founded in 1857, 58, 
by Lincoln and his rich counterpart, uh, Horace Greeley. There was no Democrats at the time. There was the Whig Party. When the Democrats finally regrouped, they were fighting on a political level. The slave level never was a part of the war itself because that war had already been fought by the Algonquins and the Powhatan. You get mighty quiet, Beth. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to find. I'm listening, but I'm trying to find the peace flag so I can see how it looks. Okay, United States civil flag of peacetime. Oh, United States civil flag. Okay. okay. Yep. Okay. Now, since we have no idea of what truly went on during the 1861 through 1865. They taught us what they wanted us to know. And they left out the the urge to read and research or to back up what they were telling us. Because if, if, you, re, if you recall your school days, they always told you or it was an unwritten law, don't ask too many questions because you disrupt the class and you'll get a bad grade. I recall they had, you, you could get A's and B's, and then you get a grade, uh, a, a section called citizenship. That's what it was. Yeah, and you yeah. were satisfactory, unsatisfactory, poor, all of that. I stayed in the poor range, an unsatisfactory range, and which brought my A's and B's down. Well, I didn't get no A's and B's, but it brought my C's and D's down to F's. <laughs> <laughs> and so since we didn't know and we didn't know it's just the power grab that's going on now the Republican Party all you got to do is just look at them they are still the uh, 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 founders or the following uh, parties of Abraham Lincoln Lincoln was a bum Lincoln was an ass Lincoln was no good none had no intention of freeing the slaves he hated the slaves, but when he saw that the South was was richer than the North and they wanted to raise the taxes on the South, it became a conflict. So since the first Civil War was over or, or, or dying down with the, like I said, the Powhatan and the Algonquins, they saw fit to launch a new war to try and establish a stronger toehold in the South for the Republican Party. And that's what you see today. You got a whole lot of bigot, racist, uh, 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 political figures in the South because that's what Lincoln set up and that's what the whole his so-called Civil War was about. It was about taking the land from the blacks, the Moors, the, the Iroquois, the Algonquins, take the land. Now, they had to do it under the war flag because when you read the treaties, they talk about ships. They don't talk about semi-trucks and buses and, and uh, that type of thing. They talk about shipping. And every vessel must have a flag to determine its intent. United States, when it was when it was to its its advantage, they flew the peace flag. Even today, I'm going to do more research, but I just read that the uh, customs, coast guard, the customs and coast guard have. Uh, shoulder patches of the peace flag. Shoulder patch. I'm gonna, I'm gonna find out about that. And that have you do you see the peace flag, uh, Beth? Yeah. Yeah. Is, is that where the uh, stripes are going down instead of across? Yes. Horizontal okay. stripes, and then the, the 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 stars are on a white background, and the red, yeah. uh, blue stars on the white. Yep. Yep. 
I've never seen that flag. But I have uh, Jonah, that's right. Jonah Bay says when you do your documents, mm-hmm. you, it, it it would be wise to put that flag once you are private. Remember, okay. maybe I shouldn't say this on the airways because okay. people are getting mixed up with uh, public and private. But once right. you have your birth certificate in place, you should use that peacetime flag. And that will surely get some attention, and it should make your paperwork go through a little bit smoother. They're all aware of it. Mm. They had the the Coast Guard, they, I, as I read about this peace flag, they, had, they didn't call them Coast Guard that, uh, in the beginning, back in 1800, uh, uh, late 17 and early 1800s. They called them Cutter and Boat Department. Cutters. Those were the gunships, battleships. And the United States, one of the first uh, uh, acquisitions for funds, they used $10,000 to to buy 10 cutters to put at the docks and to make sure that the incoming ships paid their tariff and all the you know, and all the uh, cargo was in place. Now, okay. speaking speaking of of uh, cargo and and tariffs, if you read your history, you will find that the the largest docks were on the east coast, and they were in the the cities. Rhode Island had Rhode Island, Providence, Rhode Island had one of the largest docks. And then you had Plymouth, uh, Pennsylvania. That's where the naval base is now. I think it's Plymouth, Pennsylvania. But there were several huge docks on the East Coast, which were, I think, 13 colonies. They brought the slaves in, so-called slaves in. Now, remember, we're not talking about the influx of half a million or a couple of million slaves as they try and make it out to be. We're talking about them so called indentured servants, those 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 ruffians, those um uh, Europeans that they couldn't control, ruthless ones that came in on slave ships. And the only difference between it they mentioned indentured servants, what they really are talking about is a contract Nobody had funds, so you would tell the rich ship owners, if you uh, let me go over free, I'll work on your plantations until I get free, seven years, five, whatever it was. They made the agreement, signed the contract, and that's how most of them got over here. Now, I am not mm-hmm. saying that they did not bring blacks out of Africa. I'm not saying that. Right. I'm just, I'm just saying to you that the influx of uh, this so-called missile, uh, middle, what they call it, middle passage, was a damn lie. And I mean it was a damn lie. But it was convenient in hindsight. Now think about it. It was convenient in historical re- revisionism to create this monster storybook tale in order to first hide their their dirt and their devilment. Hide it. Number two, Show the poor whites that the blacks were being treated worse than they were. And then when they started, uh, the Republicans, when when Lincoln went uh, south in regards to uh, the invasion of the south, trying to make sure that they did not uh, succeed from the Union, it increased. The north started all of the war fanfare. The North started it all. And there were blacks fighting on the southern side because they owned land down there. I never could figure out why why they showed a few blacks, or they talked about a few blacks being in, uh, in the Confederate Army. But they were not in a Confederate Army. They were fighting to defend their land. Hindsight, revisionism created this Confederate Army and these great coats and all of that madness. And uh, they, they, by doing that, they could give us a story 
I, whoever came up with this, put, making us go to school and learning that crap. That's why I always ask people when I get into uh, lectures, I like to ask, does anyone believe in the Tarzan, Tarzan syndrome? And, of course, everybody says no. A 90% of always says no. And, 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 and then I know I'm talking to people that are not really informed because the Tarzan syndrome is what they did to us. They created us. They created Tarzan. When the gorillas got a hold of Tarzan and, and, and a baby and raised him, he was swinging in the trees just like the gorillas, eating bananas. Right. Just like the gorillas. And that's what we're doing, walking around with these clothes on and trying to act like we white people. We're educated. We talk more white. We're more European than the European has ever been. He's been a, 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 a ruthless crook all his life. His nature is that. His nature is that. That's why you can't hardly hang on to him because they, they're like chameleons. They can change so quickly. But that's, a, that's another story. You know, I'm not totally qualified to give you all the, the scientific reasons for them to be like they are. But I know it has to do with white supremacy. And that's what we call it. I don't know what it is, but it's but by by historical uh, uh, research, they call it white supremacy. And all of them are guilty of it. And some of the European wannabes are guilty of it because they can live better under white supremacy. You follow me? Yes. Now, I also so, heard that that Confederate flag used to, uh, didn't it meant something, it used to be our flag or something like that? Well, I was told, and I have uh, documentation that the Algonquin tribe, which was in the New York area, down through Michigan, down through uh, Ohio, uh, yep, and New York, when the when they, they were fighting to get out from under the Magna Carta, they meaning the Europeans, because when they saw that they could live better, because they, they we we're teaching them how to live. And they begin to love it and understand it and realize that they could do better if they were out from under the Magna Carta. So that was the beginning of the so-called Revolutionary War. So when they wrote up the De Declaration of Independence, which was they had to put on notice, they had to put England on notice, that they wanted to be free. You have to do that. And that, that's a, a rule that we have to learn today, Bev. We can take nothing for granted because we're talking to corporations. We're under slavery because of corporations. So you have to put it in writing. And they call it notice of declaration. They all the affidavit of, of uh, a declaration, all types of notices, so that they will know your intent. It goes back to the flag again. What is your intent? So when they sent that to uh, England, it got to England that they wanted to be free. England said, you got to be out of your mind. You owe us $80 million. We sent you, well, whatever the case may be. So the Algonquin, I was told, said that they needed a flag to fight, a war flag. Uh, this must be a traditional, national, international process. I'm not that good in that type of study. But the Algonquin gave them a flag to use. Now, if you look up the Algonquin flag, it resembles the Confederate flag. It resembles the Confederate flag. I, 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 I'm not going to dispute what I was told, but it said that they made the flag. Now, when I looked up the Confederate flag, and I have a little bit of it here, it says the truth about the Confederate history is not what you think. That's something that you can look up, Bev. The truth okay. about Confederate history 
It's not what you, hyphen, it's not what you think. Okay? History books, the media, school systems, etc., abound in falsehoods and inaccuracies of, the, of Confederate and Southern history. They just made it up, Beverly. They made it up. Because you can't yeah. explain to me, no one can explain to me, how black people own land today all through the South. Acres of land. They don't have what they used to have because the Europeans have been taking it ever since 1866, still using the old laws. That's what that boy was talking about. They're trying to take our land. That boy was an idiot, and his mammy and pappy were idiots too. To, to, to be so ignorant as to what is going on are at least the historical factors about the Confederate or the Southern state. The fact sheet, or this fact sheet, will help to clarify and dispel some of the rampant inaccuracy, a myth. The War of 1861 and 1865 was fought over slavery. Ter- the, the, the fact, that was the myth, the fact, terribly untrue. The North fought the what? war over money, plain and simple. Yes, Bev. Well, I mean, that's, it falls in line with everything else that they do. It's yes. Not true. Yes, yes. It's not true. That's what we are, and that's what with you and uh, uh, Jonah and all of them are uncovering. Yes, yes, but we need more people to understand it because we have a multitude of black. The more I learn, the more I see the ignorance of my people, and I see the success of the Europeans or the corporations because our people are comatose. They are dead, walking zombies. They're walking zombies. Boogalooing, nice clothes, nice cars, but <laughs> no intelligence, no understanding as to who they really are. And will scream all day that racism, you're racist, and all that kind of stuff. The North fought the war over money, plain and simple. When the South started succession, Lincoln was asked, why not let the South go in peace? To which he replied, I can't let them go. Who will pay for the government? Sensing total financial ruin for the North, Lincoln waged war on the South. The South fought the war to repel Northern aggression and invasion. They wanted to control the government of the United States. They were in, their intent was to set up what we know today as United States of America. Illegal process, they did it. In no uh, regard to the original Constitution, only southern states had slaves. That's, a, that's another myth that's taught. That's entirely untrue. Many northern civilians owned slaves prior to, during, and even after the war of northern aggression. Surprisingly to many historians, impaired individuals, most Union generals and staff had slaves to serve them. Sherman had many slaves. Grant also had several slaves. Uh, General uh, uh, Robert E. Lee, I don't know what to say about him. He, he, he had slaves, but he never purchased them because he inherited them in 1862. Lee freed his slaves several years before the war was over and considerably earlier than his northern counterparts. And during the furious early days of the war, when the South was obliterating the Yankee armies. They were kicking the arm, Yankees' butt. But then, if you read the stories that I have on Lincoln, he told his generals to burn, kill the cattle, burn the crops, burn the barns, just set the entire South on fire. 
And the purpose of that was to weaken the 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 Whig Party, who was formerly or beginning to be the Democratic Party. And the Democrats realizing that they that most of the uh, Southerners or most of the Americans were Republicans, they had to come up with with something to, let's say, level the playing field. So that the Ku Klux Klan, the Black Codes, the uh, uh, Christian Black Codes, the uh, Jim Crow, all of those processes were set up in order to keep blacks away from the polls. The Democrats, ladies and gentlemen, the Democratic Party did that. The Ku Klux Klan came out of the blessing of the Democratic Party. They were fighting on the political level. Slaves had nothing to do with it. Money was the bottom line. The Confederate battle flag was flown on Slave ships, none of the flags of the uh, Confederation or or Southern nation ever flew on slave ships, nor did the South own or operate any slave ships. Y'all hear that? The English, the Dutch, and the Portuguese brought slaves to this country, not the Southern nation. And the sla- and the Dutch, the Portuguese, and the English brought the slaves into the northern uh, docks, way up in New York, uh, Rhode Island. All you got to do is look at your map. Rhode Island's perfect. Uh, Plymouth, Michigan, in uh, Plymouth, Michigan, <laughs> Plymouth, Pennsylvania. Uh, they had a big one in North Carolina. Uh, what was that city? Uh, they had a big race riot in, in that city. Uh, it'll come to me in a minute. I can't think of it. Okay? But it is also very important to know and understand that federal Yankee Union ships brought slaves to America. Listen to that word. That's the first time they mentioned the word America. They brought slaves to America. These ships were from New England states, and their hypocrisy is atrocious. In other words, they tried to hide that. The New England states, they brought ships from the New England states down. Let me read this again. It is also very important to note and understand that federal, Yankee, and Union ships brought slaves to America. So that the, you got to, I've been telling you, 13 colonies. And then you got America. America was probably, uh, let's just use it, uh, 10 times larger than the United States. Because you only had 13 states. Now, And you had territories. In America, you didn't have states, you had territories, and it was huge, and there were a lot of people. So what they're saying here, that is very important to know and understand that federal, Yankee, and Union ships brought the slaves to America. These ships were from the North New England states, and their hypocrisy is atrocious. In other words, the lie they told or tell today is atrocious. These federals, federales, were ones that ended up crying loudest about slavery, and they were the ones that created it. But without their ships, many of the slaves would have never arrived in America. They made countless fortunes on delivery of slaves as well as products made from raw materials such as cotton and tobacco in the South. This is the problem with Yankee history. It is overwhelmingly portrayed incorrectly by most of the federal and Yankee books and media. And they have no intention of changing it. They're still lying. Because if they're going to take the Confederate flag down, they need to take the American flag down. 
hear you. I hear you. Unbe- unbelievable. Unbelievable. Woo! Here's another myth. The Confederate flag represented Southern Southern nation. Not true. While the Southern battle flag was carried into battle, the Southern nation had three different national flags during the course of the war. The first national flag was changed due to resemblance of the United States flag. That was the first one. The second national, a southern national flag was subsequently modified due to the similarity of a flag of truce. Then they had the third national flag was adopted by the Confederacy. A Confederate battle flag was never a national flag of the Confederacy. It was carried into battle by several armies, such as the Army of Northern Virginia and the Army of Tennessee, who also right. used as a, na- a, na- a na- naval jack by the Confederate Navy. They also used the naval jack. I don't know what that is. That's a flag, just like the, the other uh, Union jack. Myth, the Confederate battle flag is known as stars and bars. That's a modern uh, uh, common misconception. The first national Confederate flag is incorrectly known as the stars and bars. The Confederate battle flag is known as Southern Cross. Another myth, the Confederate battle flag represents racism today. Fact. The Confederate battle flag today finds itself in the center of much controversy and hoopla going on in several states. The cry to take the flag down is unjustified. It is very important to keep in mind that the Confederate battle flag was simply just that, a battle flag. It was never even a national flag. So how could it have flown over a slave nation or represented slavery, or racism. But then you have, I would question, the rebel, I'm talking about the rebel flag, they're talking about the Confederate battle flag. This myth is is continued by lack of education and ignorance. Those who vilify the Confederate battle flag are very confused about history and have jumped upon a bandwagon with loose wheels. The United States flag represented freedom. No chance. The United States flag over a slave nation for over 85 years. It flew over a slave nation for over 85 years. The North tolerated slavery and acknowledged it as a division of labor. The North made a vast fortune on slavery and its commodities. It, It wasn't until the South decided to leave the Union that the North objected. The North knew it could not survive without the Southern money. That is true definition of hypocrisy. Woo! This this piece, I, I looked up to find this piece, and it's very, very, very interesting as to what really went on. This is what they say about Lincoln. The myth is Lincoln was a great emancipator. That's what they taught us in school. While Lincoln right. was sent, while yes, while Lincoln has went down in history as a great emancipator, many would not care to hear his real thoughts on people of color. Martyred President Abraham Lincoln was vehemently making plans to send all freed slaves to the jungles of Central America once the war was over. Knowing that African society, knowing that African society would never allow the slaves to return back to Africa, Lincoln also did not want the slaves in United States. He didn't say America. He didn't want them in the 13 colonies. He thought the jungles of South America, Central America would be the best solution and conducive to the free slaves 
best interest. The only thing that kept this from happening was his assassination. South revered slavery, loved slavery. A very interesting fact on slavery is that at, at the time of the war, official events, the southern states were actually in process of freeing all slaves in the South. Russia had its servants in, uh, freed its servants in 1859, and the South took great note of this. Had military intervention not been forced upon the South, a very different America would have been realized then as well as now. So we all mixed up. Just to round it off a bit, we are totally confused, mixed, uh, uh, mixed up on education that they made us go to school. That's right. So, see, you... And that's, you, that's why we mixed up. Yes, yes. Yes. All, all that miseducation, all that lying. Yes. And I'm under the assumption or the realization that the blacks in America today came from different parts of not only Africa, they came from different parts of America. Yeah. And today, and today especially with the uh, uh, Internet highway, we are all treated of color to be Negroes. And to be Negroes meaning that means that you're a slave or at least you're a 14th Amendment citizen. You can call yourself whatever you want. But the United States recognizes you as a subject, meaning a slave. So we are living among ourselves as in our so-called black communities. And we don't really know who we live in next door to. When you go into a Mexican neighborhood, you know what's there, a Puerto Rican neighborhood, all the other ethnic groups have neighborhoods. Now, they're mm-hmm. going to lump all of us and call us one neighborhood or one ghetto. This is one of the factors why we fight each other so, because we come from different uh, heritage, ancestors, cultures, and we don't recognize it. So we definitely got yeah. a problem. And, and we now, all think that we came on the on the slave ship from Africa at yeah, the same yeah. time. Yes, yes we do. Yes we do. But and even now, if that was even if that was true, Ron, the, the, it was still different uh, cultures and village in Africa. Yes, because they brought them from all so-called. They brought them from all areas of Africa. So you mm-hmm. still had a mixture of different cultures, right. languages, and tribes. Yeah, yeah. And then when you bring them here, I saw a lady. I went to a meeting the other night, and boy, she looked just like a, a Indian, and I mean those people of uh, copper, let's call them copper people. So I asked okay. her, what tribe are you from? She laughed. She said, a lot of people ask me that. She said, and it's probably because my mother was Oriental. She was Chinese or she was Oriental. I don't know which one. And I said, oh, no kidding. So if your father was black, that's where the Indian or the copper people came from because the omic mixed with the o- orientals. She looked at me. She said, you know, I've heard that, and I need to talk to you more about that. And I said, I was told that's where they come from. And I mean, she was she was a perfect uh, specimen of an Indian. Okay. Um, you, know what, you know what I'm trying to say. Copper, right. She would be, yeah, because the word Indian is, is they they messed up on that so much is is pathetic, but they did to the so-called Indian what they did to the so-called African when they started mixing, because you had 
the omic, which was a predominant gene in America. Black, he was so black they called him a nickname in history, rubber people. And they mixed with other ethnic groups, such as the Mayans, the, the, the Aztecs, the Dogons, and now we know the, the Orientals that, that came from across the Bering Strait, as they talk about. And then you got a mixture of uh, whatever. <laughs> a mixture of whatever. And that's why it's so surprising that I would have 9% of my DNA, 9% would be indigenous American. That's 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 heavy. Yeah. That's really heavy. That's heavy. Because the spirits, when you start dealing with all of these types of genetics, now I, I'm not a professional. Don't don't jump on me. <laughs> but I know when you start dealing with all this type of mixture, you got all kinds of spirits in you. Right. And they and they 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 from all walks of life. And if you don't recognize it and stop trying to be, as they say, a United States citizen, <laughs> you, you, you need to be on somebody's couch because we have really been psychologically damaged through this process of miscegenation. I'll just say it that way, mixing the blood. Wow. Do you have any uh, questions over there, chat room, or anything, uh Beth? Uh, I don't have any questions. Uh, if you have questions or comments, oh, yes, I do. You can call 347-215-8041. Uh, I have a question here. Area code 314-761. Hey, peace and love, peace and love. This is Sia, Sia. How you doing, Ryan? Peace and love. All right, yeah, I just want you to know, guys, to know the uh, the history of the federal, uh, Confederate flag, it's five different flags of the of the of Confederate Confederate flag. The flag that they're talking about now is the last one that they made based on the Bull Run. Uh, General uh, Bernhard, that's his name. They represented the 13 stars. Well, the first flag looked like the the uh, peace and friendship flag, what they call the American flag, but it had 35 stars. People need to look this up, and the reason why they made the X because they went into war. Concerning that, they was you know they was making that concerning X marks the spot. It was a way to identify themselves and separate themselves from the North due to the business that was occurring on. Like you said, it's all about business and money, and that's where the slaves came in at. But if you do research, they got five different versions of the Confederate flag, and it tells each history subject matter of what those flags represented due to commerce, due to the wars, and everything like that. So they got to focus on one flag when we're supposed to be working, knowing about all those flags because it tells a lot about history. But you, you're talking about the Confederate flag of the Algonquin and or the Iroquois Confederation. You're not talking about this hillbilly flag, this rebel flag. They didn't have, they didn't have the knowledge of that. When you when X marks the spot right. and all of that. The Union flag, that was that was a union flag. Remember, they always copycat. They they copycat. All they did is copycat. All these flags that they make it on number copycat of what we already had. Okay. What they do is whenever we make something, they do the same thing to cover up their asses in other way. In other words, they create yes. their history simultaneously. You understand? Yes. When yes. you when you do but, the research, but, you will understand. Go ahead. You need to clarify. Who had this flag with the X marks the spot? You're, that describes that Iroquois flag to me. What flag? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm saying you're right. So what? What I'm saying is all they did was carbon copy, being that we're carbon or melanin rich people. Everything that we did, who, all they did is mocked what we who, did. Who, you know what I'm who is they? Who is they? Who is they? Okay, we're talking uh, about the Battle of Manasseh. You, okay. Now you're talking about Manasseh, 18, when you started the Battle of Manasseh. All right. Eighteen sixties. Is that where is that where you are? 
Okay. 1860s? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm around that time, yeah. All right, all right. Okay, go ahead. But, okay, this, what I'm saying, when they when they created their flag, they called it Stars and Bars, or yes. Stars and Stripes. What they did, all they did the, the general, yeah, exactly. All they did was when we was in war or they tried to mock our business or mock the amateur laws that we have, they had to set up posts to be identified. They didn't have anything. They didn't know nothing. You know what I'm saying? So they had to act as if they was us to acquire the land. So they made a flag just like us. You see what I'm saying? Similar to us. You see what I'm saying? Yes. To make yes. themselves look like they were a part of the land. You see what I'm saying? But but it's, it's, it's evident. Good. That's what they're doing now. All they do is take what we have and use it as if it was theirs. They'll make a little tweaks here and there, you see, yep. and yep. put it out to the public as if that's, what, that's what's going on or has gone on. Well, explain to me. When you look at the side of the computer, mar- go ahead. If, you were, if you're telling me that they marked our flag, I want to know yeah, who heard. was our flag. Is that what you're saying? You said yeah. they took our yeah. flag and they and yeah. they mimicked our flag. Well, I'm trying to get to the area or the era of the two wars, the, the Iroquois and the Powhatan War, and then they had the so-called Civil War. We're talking two different wars. Now, I know we had flags all over the place, and I also know that the United States had a flag, which was a war flag. Now, you haven't explained Correct. how the Confederate flag got into play and what year did it get into play? You follow me? When they, when they, you're right. It was a war. It was a war flag that was adopted in uh, October the first, eighteen sixty-two. It was it was called the Confederate Congress when the army adopted the flag to extend the uh, the eastern forces. And so when each west uh, each uh, western course tended to have their own design. They all adopted and designed assembly in the Eastern foot battle flags. Okay. What I'm saying is, as they, as the war went on, they adopted our type of flag because we knew jurisdiction a part of the land based on territories. So they had to emulate that to make it seem like they owned the territory under the United States Corporation. Do you understand? Yes, 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 yes. yes. But when did the rebel flag hang it? Go ahead. When did the rebel flag that's hanging down in Carolina now, when did that come into play, and who had it? Now, tell me that. When it comes to play, now, yes. now that's a good question. Now, that's the part where we're trying to figure out it. But that last flag was the Bullhorn flag, which is that flag that they call the Southern Cross. Remember, they say it's all the same. Matter of fact, put it like this. When you really do the study on it, You'll see that all they did was change it according to what the situation was, based on who joined them in the alliance to fight off or to create more slaves or to get more uh, goods uh, from the land. Remember, well, they have to fit in. Well, they wasn't. They didn't. Uh, they didn't have the whole America yet. You see what I'm saying? Correct. They had to make, they had to squeeze their way. This is how they, Simon said, this is how they slipped their way in, in other words. They slipped their way in by using the same flag we use. You know what I'm saying? The act represents, uh, is a feminine energy anyway. You know what I'm saying? You, well, you understand what the act well, is truly in metaphysics. Go ahead. Well, see, when you keep hear me? saying they, yeah, I hear you, but when you keep saying they, I'm trying to find out who is they. Now, the last piece you ran, you were talking about, I thought, United States, and you said they needed the Confederate flag. They would be, I would assume, United States. United States always had their flag. Correct. Oh, glory. Correct. The war flag. But you, I'm getting confused Correct. in... I'm getting confused the way you're presenting this. You're not... Stop saying they and tell me who they are as you speak. That's all I'm asking. Because you're throwing okay. me off. The, the United States, the, the United States, the 13 colonies. Yes. They had to create the flag 
similar to the flag that already existed on this land. Oh wait, wait. To make them up as wait a minute, and I'll and I'll shut up. It's, now I got it. You're you're talking uh, revision, historical revisionism when they started putting it in the books. Is that what you're talking about? Correct. Oh. Exactly. Exactly. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, I got exactly you. Exactly right what I'm on. talking about. Yeah. I'm, just, I'm just trying to squeeze in. I'm not trying to throw your show off. I'm just trying to squeeze in a little nuances because when you understand that, you can understand how you've been tricked. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. How? Because how, it's hard to get people to understand how. Well, they got the flag. They got the proof. They got the history. Well, let me show you how they made this history be. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a lot I of it's you. not written down. You, you understand? Know what I'm saying? Well, in between. Yes, yes. You gotta so figure it out. It All right, but when you when what? I hear you saying that they did it in hindsight, you're totally correct. You are totally correct. And I and I have not clarify myself. Uh, well, that's okay. I mean, I I was gonna stick with you to to figure out who that who that when you say it the way you said it, it 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 it, it threw me off, and I was just trying to get. Make it clear so the audience can understand. Well, and, and, and I appreciate your call. Well, let me say before I go, we really probably do need to do more research on this Confederate flag because they're actually taking it down. Now, that's a lot to say for them to take that flag down. There's something serious going on behind that. Think about that. They're taking the Confederate flag down? They, think about it. <laughs> yes. When you take down a flag, that's, that's taking away identifying that jurisdiction. Yes. Well, That's when serious. you think of, listen, when you think about yesterday's show and today's show, it makes sense. They're taking the flag down because they're destroying black America or they're destroying the Moorish nation by taking that flag down. Mm-hmm. But that flag, oh, like geez. I said earlier, it represented the Iroquois Confederation. It was very similar to that. Now, they got those ignorant uh, Southerners doing all they're doing about that flag that had nothing to do with it. But now that they're taking it down, and at the same time, they're recognizing the union marriage, sex, same-sex marriage, that's a, a big blow to black America. You got it? Mm-hmm. I, got it. I got it. I got it. And you know, you know it's connected with the Redskins and all that, too. All that's connected with those football teams, uh, uh, yes. logos, and all that. Yes, yes, yes. I got you, brother. I appreciate your call. You really, you really hooked it up. Woo! Thank, that makes me thank you, Colin. Yes. Wow. Did you get that better? Yeah. Did you understand me? Yeah, but that's what I was saying earlier. I just, I had heard that that was our flag at first, and they yes. took it. Just like well, the me, swastika, sir. Like, yes. like the not, like he, that was ours. Yes, 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 yes. And he took and, it and made and, it into negative. And we all now. Do you you remember the lady in Detroit, the the, the city councilwoman that sued the beer companies because uh, the forty had symbols on it that were spiritually connected to our I'll say culture because I'm not that heavy in it. But it was mm-hmm. causing all of our youth and young people to drink them forty, them forties. You remember yes. that? Yes, yes. So symbols, and I also know that they got uh, areas like, whew, well, we could take this a long way, babe. They got areas like Grand Canyon and uh, all those types of places where they put certain areas off limits because they cannot destroy the artifacts that are in there that will give us our history. So we're only looking at symbols. And when you see certain symbols, certain things react in your body. So now when we go back to the rebel flag, and again, I'm going to say, if you look at, and I'm going to do it when we take break, if you look at the Iroquois flag, it is very, very close. And what being said especially in historical revisionism 
and they're taking the flag down. It's almost like dropping down the cherry tree that George Washington did to the Moors when he tricked them and turned on them and destroyed them, put contracts out on them. You get it? But if you look at, at their history, that's what they do. They take things that are very powerful to us, and they take it and make it look like it's bad to keep us away from it. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. And vice versa, things that are good for us, they make it bad so we'll stay away from it. Yes, that's what I'm saying. And things that are bad for us, they make it good, and we go after it, like eating yes. pork. Yeah. Putting all this damn yeah. salt in the food. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. All right, I got a call here. We're going to take this call and we'll take a break afterwards. Okay. Uh, caller 301-0246. Do you have a question or comment? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, good evening, Bev. Good evening, Ron. This good is, evening. Uh, good evening. This is uh, Chris out of Maryland. Yes, sir, Chris. Okay. How you doing? All right. Um. Uh, you saying about the the beer? I heard that the beer when it was made the forty the forty ounce of old English eight hundred that represent mm-hmm. the symbol of the old age and the gold and burgundy represent the Moors colors. Uh, mm-hmm. So I wanted to drop say that about that and then uh, I want to say something about an episode I had on the twenty sixth of uh, this month uh, last month. And it's and it's uh, something about the spirit, like you were just talking about the spirit. Your spirit is not connected, you know. Some, yes. you know, it's you know some things gonna ha- the boogeyman gonna come and get you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So uh, I'm I'm going to work at uh well my, my start time is like four thirty. So I leave out of the house, take about thirty minutes. So I leave out, wake up, you know, get up normal day. So I take this route. I've been going this route for like three years. So uh, this this morning, about 4 o'clock, you know, right, riding, normal route. So police, he comes up, you know, he like emerged, you know, waiting, you know, to catch somebody doing something wrong. So I'm going 40 miles, I'm going 44 miles per hour in 40. So so I'm like, okay, I'm in the left lane, there's another car behind me in the right. So we both going the speed limit. So I have my windows rolled down. So I guess I'm black, so he pulls up, you know, he creeping now. Turns up to the left, you know, you know, just riding. I'm driving, so I'm speeding up a little bit. I said, "We get." So next thing I know, so the other cop behind me is speeding up. So this cop get between. He forces himself between me and the guy in the back, and put his sirens on and say, uh, uh, "So, so when he puts the sirens on, he pulls me over." So I was like, uh, "So what's the problem, officer?" He said, "Well, you was going too slow." You can't go too slow when you got traffic by going behind you. <laughs> Check this out, Ron. Here we go. I said, going too slow. I said, sir, the speed limit is 40 miles per hour. I said, I'm going 44. Uh, well, uh, can I see your license, driver's license, registration? I'm like, I'm like, really? Seriously? He said, yes, yeah, sir, please. Uh so I'm look, you know, I'm, I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm just thinking about you now, you know what I'm saying? What you, what you tell about, you know? I'm like, this, no, he didn't go there. So look here, it's four o'clock in the morning. I'm trying to go to work. You ain't got nothing else better to do. Ain't nobody out here. So okay, I get, get my, uh, get my driver's license. So I don't have a problem. Oh, oh man, no, I'm like, shit. Can't get to work on time. This nigga making me late for work now. It's some, talking about some some speed limit. Ain't nobody out here. So I right, so I'm digging. You know, can't find me. You know, for some reason I can't find my registration. Okay. So he he looking at me like I'm crazy now. So he say, um, sir, has anybody been smoking marijuana in your car? I said, no, sir. What are you talking about? So I was like. Oh, Lord, where are we going now? And he was like, oh, can you please step out of the car? Uh, so I was like, okay, no problem. I step out of the car. So I said, uh, he was like, uh, sir, can you stand right here behind your car right here, sir? Uh, can you place your hands behind your back? I said, as soon as he said, place your hands behind your back, I said, sir, I do not wish to contract with you. You know what he did after that? He backed What's away. That? He backed away, two steps back, and then I stared at him. I said, hmm. I got you. 
huh, you can't put them handcuffs on me now, even though you say I was suspect of marijuana in my car. So I'm talking to him. I was like, man, why you give me a hard time? I'm like, I'm going to work. He said, you said, I do not wish the contractor, so I can't say nothing to you. I said, oh, okay. So I was like, uh, so why are you holding me up now? Oh, we got to search your car. So we got, he called the dogs, you know what I mean? So they come with the dog, search the car, sit down. So, you know, they got a whole scene, whole make a whole scene out. They search the car, got a dog all in there, sniffing the dog, come back, they finish the dog. Then the two police goes in there. I was like, what the two police doing in there? They said, well, the dog don't get it done well. They got to send the two officers in there. I said, okay. So the two officers search the car. They goes in. Then I was like, what are they doing now? He said, well, one go on one side, one go on the other side. I said, man, y'all just wasting my time, really. You know what I'm saying? I said, man, if you ain't find nothing by now, you ain't going to find nothing. So all this going on, right, this was, the, this was the oddest thing about this whole thing. My wife at home had to go to work right after me. She woke up in the middle of the night, and she 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 had a dream about this. Had a dream. She dreamed about forty dollars we was arguing about. Forty dollars for me taking her to work. So the forty dollars she was arguing at me about was the forty miles per hour that I was arguing with the officer about. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I said, wow. uh, and, and you know, and that's one thing about the spirit. When your spirit is connected and grounded, they cannot touch you. Because your so what, so what was the outcome? What was the outcome? He gave me, um, he gave me, okay, he gave me a fifty dollars citation, and you know what I did with that? I, I, I do not contract, you know. Right. Well, what yeah. was the what was the what was the citation? What was the charge? He say, he, look, then he gave me, he gave me, he gave me, uh, he talking about the speed limit, right? He put on there, yeah. he didn't even put the speed limit. How I was going? He just said you're just going too slow. Wow. Wow. You see what I'm saying? Wow. He just made it up. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? He just created it. And I looked at him and like, you know, I was like, you know, now you look like a fool because you ain't getting nothing. You know what I'm saying? You ain't getting nothing off me. You know what I'm saying? You ain't, ain't nothing I ain't had. You just created that because you forced your way onto me because I'm going to work. You know what I'm saying? As an honest man out here going to work because I was black. That's why you, you, you pulled me over that time in the morning. And then, you know, what's so strange, what's so strange too about that, that same Go ahead. That yeah, same day, right? You got, yep. you got, you got the FBI at, at my at my job too. They look suspicious. Talking about they look for a package. I said this could <laughs> really be all the setup. <laughs> all, right, all right, brother. <laughs> that, that, I'm gonna talk to you about that. I'm gonna get back with you on that. Okay. Right? Yeah, we, we'll talk. Right. Okay. All right. All right. Bye bye. There she is. Yep. Beverly D. Yes, Ron Mark. <laughs> Chaos come in. Now, you know, you know, know he, I have somebody. Set him up. I have, Chaos. 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 <laughs> yes, go ahead, Beth. Go hey, ahead, Beth. Beth. <laughs> uh, I have someone in the chat room, and they're saying that taking down the flag um, could be a distraction, possibly, or the initiation to the changing of the official guard to England or Zionist. It could be systematic dismantling of a nation or corporate corporate takeover. It's true. So what um, we were talking about at the end of the program, of the first hour, I'm going to do more research on that, but they're, they're, they are correct. By taking that flag down, the nation is is being destroyed or or mm-hmm. dismantled, as she said, and that's true. Yeah. So, since there is no confederate nation, and as the brother said, they they mimicked our flag of the air of of the Algonquin, which was in the south, the Iroquois Confederation. You dig it? So that mm-hmm. by them flying that flag, it was an, it was an honor to the Iroquois. That they, but they, that they were still alive, because the, the war had nothing to do with. Uh, can I say the people? Because we, I'm getting ready to read where there were all types of people of color on the Confederate side 
because they own land. Right. And Lincoln was trying to take the land to make America part of United States. So United States of America. That's what it was all about. They didn't come up with that 1871 overnight. It had to be a plan way before, probably before Lincoln went in office. With him and, and uh, 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 Horace Greeley probably put that package together with other people a long time ago, along with England. Because that new United States, far, the United States of America, not for America, of America, the trustees was, was Queen and the Pope. So whoever ran that, I can, I can tr- truly, it makes sense. And it makes other things fall in place. That's why I said I got to go back and do some more research on that, and I'm going to talk to some people on that. That's that's good, a bit. Mm-hmm. That's good. Yeah. But she said that. That's very good. Yeah. Wow. And and isn't okay. it? Uh, didn't you tell me or someone was saying? Now isn't the Queen and the Pope and the United States? Those are different arms of the corporation, isn't one? We I know we the military and one is the the finance and, and it, yes. it's in that. Uh, yes, yes, yes. And and United States is a plantation <laughs> where the money is generated. Yeah. We we are paying for everything. Let me let me uh, tell you uh, uh, something that I read over the weekend while I was on that my trip. Uh, okay. It was just the concept of privatization. Now, everybody understands it, but they don't put it in practicality, meaning the police department of Detroit has been purchased. It's owned by the corporations. That's where the new cars came from. Detroit, see, Detroit was on the blink as they say, a bankruptcy, right? But as soon as the bankruptcy was over, money began to come into Detroit in in groves. Where did the money come from? All of a sudden, we get new police cars. Now, the fine print of the police cars is the, the corporations use their collateral to per, to to, to, to uh, lease the vehicles, and the citizens of Detroit are going to pay the fees for the vehicle. The monthly payments are being paid by the people of Detroit. Okay. So when you think about that, that's how they generate capital in order to keep England afloat and the Pope being super rich. Because they didn't put up anything. Because the banks are a part of corporations. The General Motors is a part of the corporate. I don't know what kind of cars they are, but you've seen them. They're brand new. Yeah, right. And I understand. A lot, of, they lot got of them. A lot of them are Chargers, and a lot of them are Ford uh, Escape. Well, most of the suburbs had a Ford, but a lot of them are Chargers and yep. Chrysler. Okay, well, that's that's how privatization works. Once they privatize, and we know nothing about it. Now I heard uh, the other day something uh, strange that the entire city council—I call it city council, what do they call them? Uh, whatever they are, downtown—they were invited up to Mackinac for the Mackinac uh, uh, annual Mackinac uh, uh, convention that they have up there. Right. That was never done under Kwame and the other mayors. That was never done. They was always complaining that they never did get an invite because they was only inviting those Europeans who were part, well, let me say it better, those individuals who were part of the takeover of the city of Detroit. But now that they have engulfed the crooks or the idiots of the of the common city council, they are part of the scheme, so they got to go to those meetings, and they probably are are going to give them input. You see what I'm saying? 
And yeah, we, well, it makes sense because they yeah. part of the, the the takeover, so they part of the new how, whatever, however the corporations do it when they take over. Yes. Don't they always well, train their own people in? I was told by some high, uh, city workers, uh, and I mean supervision, that they mm-hmm. they were given that loan that uh, pay raise they was asking for, they got it. Mm-hmm. Have you heard anything on that? No. Yep. So the question is, why would you give them a raise when they have no power, no say so? All they do is duplicate or double check whatever the mayor now and the uh, emergency manager then. All they do is sign off. So the records, yeah. historically, it will show that black people gave away Detroit, not Peckwood. Yeah, right. And for all you people out there, all you listeners out there that are not from Detroit, you better pay close attention because Detroit was only a model for the rest of the of, um, United States. But yeah. we also got to... We got to look at it as a corporate. We got to understand how corporate takeovers are done, you know, because that we got to look at them as corporate entities. And who is they? Look at them uh, as the, the, the state, the the Detroit. Oh yes! Oh yes! Oh yes! Uh, the like I like I just said, the police department is a corporation. The yeah. the uh, the uh, uh, judges belong to a, a corporation. Um, mm-hmm. They all everything has been incorporated. Everything in the United States. When I mentioned the, the the Buck Act, which we need to do a show on that, or at least I need to put some of that information on the uh, 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 my website. <clears throat> the Buck Act was set up because every dwelling in United in America. Think about this. Every dwelling in America has a mail a mailbox. Am I right? Would you agree? Yes, you are. Yes, I agree. And by, and by them having a mailbox, and then also those that work, they take out Social Security. So the Buck Act said, or it was it was enacted on the fact that wherever the United States is. That's their jurisdiction. So that's how United States took over America. Because with the mailbox. mailbox. Ain't that something? Yeah. And nobody said a word. Because they're they're so ignorant as to what's going on. And then when you run into PhDs. Oh, I didn't tell you, Bev, my program that I went to down in Mississippi. Uh, uh-huh. It was a very, very interesting and beautiful program. The turnout was not what they had anticipated. But the uh-huh. ladies, there was a prox. It was two gentlemen. There was a there was a a uh, two gentlemen and eight women that was were, were presenters. I was one of the gentlemen, and the okay. ladies had yes. The ladies had everything from masters, M- MDs, and PhDs, and I mean several. And they presented a very, very, very interesting program on women's rights and women's health and women's uh, position in the, uh, you know, in the struggle of freedom. Okay. And, okay. And uh, it was very, it was very interesting. But okay. my point in, in bringing that up is we have so many educated individuals, and when I presented my program, I stunned not only the audience, I knocked the daggum women out of their seat. But you know me. Yeah. <laughs> right. But but you got to look at where they got their education from. Yes. Oh, I, I understood it. And when we are, were on break and had break, uh, lunch and breakfast, we did, we, those we should have taped those conversations because all of that came out, Beth. And they were okay. wondering, 
uh, how I knew so much and didn't have what they had, and you know that type of thing. You know, it was uh, right. it was interesting. It was very interesting, and uh, yes, it was very interesting. So we got a lot of educated ones. That's my point in bringing all that up. I was trying to say, when you see educated individuals on TV representing you or representing your cause, and they're not informed on the issues or the event, right. that's a hell of a setback. Yeah, and most of them are, are in that position. That's right. You're totally correct. Most of them are in that position. They don't know a damn thing. And That's I just right. taped, I understand that Eric Dyson, Eric Eric uh, Dyson, right. he's on that, uh, a Bill Maher. I don't know if you got HBO, but I'm going to listen to him and see yeah. where he, he loves to run. Oh, he, he's super educated. And yeah, I, I him and hear his he, wife. Him and who? Him and his wife. Oh, I never, I never she's met his wife. Uh huh. She's, yep. she's educated. Okay. All right. Let me uh, uh, tell, uh, go back to a, a myth that we need to discuss that we ended up okay. on last last hour, and that was the myth only North had people of color in their ranks. Now you know that's what they taught us. The Buffalo Soldiers, uh, Union Soldiers in blue and blue uniforms. They show black regiments and all that kind of stuff. Here's a fact. Quite simply, a major falsehood of history. Many blacks, both free and on their own will, joined the Confederate Army to fight for their beloved Southern home. Additionally, men of other ethnic extractions fought as well, Orientals, Mexicans, and Spanish men, as well as Native American Indians, fought with pride for the South. Isn't that something to to, to mm-hmm. adhere to? Today, many men of color are members of the Heritage Group, Sons of the Confederate Veterans. I never heard of it. Sons of the Confederate Veterans. Now we're getting back to your chat room comment and the caller, the last caller we had that raised the issue that bringing down that flag was destroying the Iroquois Confederation. And we did it. The black girl did it, not knowing her history. And black people have been marching, crying, and praying down there for the last 40 years to take the damn flag down. Now, that's pure ignorance, Beth. Yeah, you know, I don't know. Our morning queen or our, our afternoon queen been crying for years. Every year, she, she sponsors through, listen to this, through corporate contribu- uh, contributions. Through corporate contributions, she, she sets up buses to go to Charlotte to sing and pray, we shall overcome. Now, think about that. And you know, if I try to bring it up, they're going to look at me like, where's your PhD? Where do you get that from? You know, that type of stuff. I'm incredible. I'm, I'm not credible because I don't have those tags of, of, of treachery or those tags of PhD, master, and all that stuff. Unbelievable. Uh, you don't have the tags of the miseducation. Of the miseducation. There you go. There you go. Too many men today, many men of color are members of the Heritage Group. C, I mean, SCV, Sons of Confederate Veterans. These men of color. These men of color and pride rejoice in their heritage. I got to look that up there. The continual attacks on the Southern nation, the Confederacy, and her symbols are a terrible, terrible outrage to their to these fine people. These attacks should be denounced with as much fervor as those who denounce the South. 
Isn't that something? Yeah. And they and then historically, the uh, school books, the Confederate flag, are an authorized symbol of the Aryan, Ku Klux Klan, and hate groups. And that's a lie. They teach it, but it's a lie. See, all of that was done for a reason. Since they have never never defeated the Iroquois Confederation. Because, again, we're back at at what I've been saying all the time, that there were two civil wars. Well, actually, there was one civil war and and then there was an invasion of the South. That sounds a little bit better. And I'm going to make some calls tonight to get some more clarification on that. But I do know, like I told you before, or I mentioned before I didn't tell you, Noble Drew Ali's grandfather fought with the Algonquin nation of confederacy against the power tan. And whew, that was in eighteen fifty five when that went on. So we okay. have been hoodwinked we've been hoodwinked, babe. All the way around. Well we you know, really, to me to me now that I'm I'm been listening to you and, and we looking at things, we've been dealing with corporate takeover all the time. Yes. We certainly have, but we. I now didn't we gotta know. Be able to, we got to understand what we do. How you gonna fight something and you thinking it's something else and it's something totally different? We have to understand corporate. Yes. Yes. You know, I would like for you to email me that question that that your caller, not question that statement. Oh, that statement. You, okay. Yes. Is there any? You can cut and paste and maybe yeah. uh, text it or email it to me. I want to look at that. Because the okay. first thing that came to my mind was the movie Robert Redford. He played a colonel in prison. What was the name of that movie? And they put the, and the black guy was a general, a brigadier general. Robert Redford mm-hmm. went to prison on a principle, he refused to bow to the corporations, so he, he they sent him to a prison. And this brigadier black general was was protecting him, but the warden, which was another general or colonel, hated him and was told to 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 kill him or to make breaking. What was the name of that? It was all about prison and army, and he put the flag upside down which meant that there was distress. They needed help. What was the name of that movie? Oof, I'm looking right at it. I can't call it. The guy that played in the mafia movie that died at an early age was the other gen- uh, general that was after Robert Redford. I don't never did know the, the last, name. The last, somebody said The Last Castle? Yes. Is that it? Yes, yes. Yes, yes. That's why I wanted to look at that, uh, The Last Castle. That's what it was. Yes. That was a good movie. And it, it, it talked about the flag because that flag played a, an important part of the movie. I think I'm going to look at it again. It comes on uh, every now and then on, on, on cable, and I'm going to look at it okay. again. Yep. Okay. I wanted to read. Um, about the Confederate flag and the Aryan nation and the Ku Klux Klan, all of that that they created. See, the Ku Klux Klan, they were bragging, you know they, they're setting up a uh, a rally on the 18th of, Ju- of July in uh, South Carolina, and they made a point that 42 states have registered, certified Ku Klux Klan membership. Okay. Think, think about that for a minute. In other words, they are corporations, Ku Klux Klan, yeah. that are endorsed by United States. A hate yeah. group. Yeah. 
But you know they did that uh, during Martin Luther King when when he was doing his thing, they did the same thing. They came together. Yes, 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 yes. But it was more open when Martin Luther King was doing it because the police were crew cut clan. They are now also, but they were putting dogs out and all of that. And you're totally correct. I I, I recall everything you're saying. It's true. What you said was true. But I was just bringing up the point that they still have 42 states that have mm-hmm. registered clan membership. Now, somebody said, had the Black Panthers incorporated, they they would be alive today. That's why the police turned on them, because they were labeled a combatant, because they never incorporated into the United States. They became a total threat. And that's why they used the FBI to wipe them out with the COINTEL program and got okay. away with it. No one ever challenged the COINTEL program. They said it was bad. They said it needed modifying. But all the people they killed, nobody said anything about it. FBI got away with it. But they got away with it because the militant groups of the 60s never registered, which was all good, never incorporated into the United States. Ku Klux Klan did, and they're protected by the laws of the United States. That's really ugly when you think about it. Right. And to, and to, it, to try and explain that to an uh, evil, not evil, but a, a a militant young guy, he's allowed to turn, and turn on you. What the hell are you talking about? I've experienced that, those attacks. They're angry. The youth are very angry, Beth. They are very, very angry. And the police, the only well, thing they know is their training, and that is to shoot to kill. And that's what I, I be trying to tell them, young cats. I mean, y'all, you got to live. You know, you got to live for another day. You cannot buck a police officer with, with a pistol and back up. It don't make sense. You're going to lose. You're going to lose. There are other ways. If you use your mind, you can do it another way. Well, anyway, to talk about these hate groups, the lie is these despicable organizations, such as Ku Klux Klan, the Aryan Nation, have taken a hollow piece of history and have plagued good Southern folks and the memories of their fine Confederate soldiers that fought under the flag with their uh, per- perverse agenda. In no way does a Confederate flag represent hate and violence. Now, remember, we're talking about the real Confederate flag. The one that they have, maybe I shouldn't say the real, because the one they have is the real Confederate flag. Yeah, that's what I, yeah. Yeah. Yep, it is I real. Googled, I, I Googled the Air Corps Nation um uh, Flag and the Confederate flag is right there. It, it is there. Yeah, it's there. I'm looking at it now. That's right. That's right. But when you got misguided, miseducated people, and they can influence their minds through these hate groups and through the laws that were viciously against home homeowners and landowners, known as. Black codes, uh, 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 you know what I'm talking about, uh, Jim Crow, Christian black codes. See, I'm getting totally tired of these jackass preachers, jack leg preachers, and these bougie Negroes still talking about integration, loving the enemy, and all of that madness when it hasn't worked. Why they keep doing it, it can only be it's on their agenda of getting paid or getting privileges from the system. That's the only answer. Why do they continually do it? I don't know. You see what I'm saying? I don't know. Do you have any answer on that? (laughs) Why 
Why? <laughs> Say that again. Why I do they? Con- yep. And and notice. Why? Go ahead. Why do they continually do? They. I'm talking about the newscasters. Uh, we're finding out that most of them are gay anyway. The uh, black newscasters. And the women are lesbians, and you know, whether they're gay, the same thing. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. the Europeans can get along with gays. They can definitely get along with gays. Unbelievable, mm-hmm. I'm telling you. Now they passed the law, and they're challenging. They passed the law on sex marriage, and now they're challenging, and they're tearing down the, the Confederate flag. And they're doing it under a black president. Let's not yeah. forget that. Have mercy. Yeah. I don't, I didn't know. But you got to remember, Ron, that's why I say we got to understand corporate because the news media, all of them is just different arms of the corporation. Yes. Okay. I so agree. That's why they do it. Woo. But what? What's next, Beth? What's next? I, I, what's I on feel the, like that. Mm-hmm. You feel like what? I feel like that that person that was in the chat chat room hit it. Yeah. Well, if we don't use our mind, that includes the gays, the gays, because that's what they. And you can see. It, it's shifting. You can see they they are being put in charge. It, 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 it that's what it looks like. It looks like that there's definitely a takeover. Yes. Well, I told you I went to dinner on Saturday when I got back, and uh, the guy that well whatever it was that waited on us was gay, and I mean he was flouting around like a. <laughs> Yeah, you know, and I, I brought they it up to the my wife. They get yes. the privileges. They yes. get the privileges. Yes. Yes. Oh man. And, well, and and that's how that's how corporate, you know, that's how uh, they function. They they give you privilege. Yes, ma'am. Totally correct. They give you privilege, but see, when they start flaunting, see, I took it as though he was saying to me that I'm gay and I don't have to hide anymore, so just right. take it or shove it. And he just, hands was all flying all over, and it was bad. I would have loved yeah, to but he, but he was saying <laughs> that, but he was also saying, look, this is the new corporation. This is the new thing now. Yes, yes, he said all of that. He certainly yeah. did. Mm. And well, you can't say nothing about it. You know, from the from your from your your chat room to your last caller of last hour, my mind is just have went blank. I can't wait to start researching or looking up or at least calling people in regards to what was said, because I've always talked about historical re- revisionism. And what they're doing in Carolina right now, they are really acting out what they lost in 1866. Mm -hmm. And what they lost, they never did defeat the Iroquois Confederation. That's why that flag was there all the time. 1866. God don't mind it, though. So now they take and they can take that flag down. Yes. And as as the chat room person said, they have now they can celebrate that they have completely destroyed the confederation. Mm-hmm. So now the corporation says that we own everything now. Yeah. That's that's deep. They already had the power tan. Apparently, once they turned Christian with Pocahontas, yeah. I got I got to get that lady back on again. 
uh, uh, Stephanie Turner. I got to get yeah. her on. We need to talk about this. So, but, anyway. But, that, but that's what the New World Order is all about. Yes. They've been working on this for a long time, baby. It's, it's not an overnight. Yeah. It's not oh, an overnight no. thing. And what made all the other states uh, jump in on the bandwagon? All the corporations, as you noticed, are saying they're not going to sell it anymore. And it would take a CCS killing those uh, to hide the truth. They had to kill nine people in the church in order to to, to, to do this thing. Yeah. To do it. Yeah. Exactly. That's true. That's it, scary. Exactly. Well, it gets deeper than that. The more yeah, you is. go down that rabbit hole. Yep. All right, well. Well, wait a minute. I'm, Someone's saying uh, they want you to please analyze how George and Matt Romley destroyed the state of Michigan. Rob is correct. I mean, okay, it's correct in saying the Michigan was the, I can't have to read this, was the, oh, was the, the test for the rest of the United States. So he's saying he was right, this person. But they want you to analyze how George and Matt Romley destroyed the state of Michigan. Now, they told us that Romley was a, was a good friend to Coleman Young, that he helped uh, people of color. Well, that's always a good a good move uh, to help people, just like uh, uh, Matty Maroon with all of his thievery. Uh, uh, the women that worked for him in those, uh, what they call them, old folks home, they love him. If you say something bad to one of them, they will literally attack you. He gives them turkeys and all that. So my point is, most of the time when you have a crook or a racist, he always sets up a fanfare of love for the enemy. And meanwhile, he's doing all the dirt to destroy the enemy. But I'm looking back at Romney. Was it Romney that... Uh, yeah, it was Romney that Coleman yeah. protected Coleman. Yeah. And right, the he was a Republican. Was, yeah. Yes, yes. Well, I I don't know because I know Coleman was a uh, Mason, a big Mason, and Romney had to be a Mason because he was very powerful and very high up a governor. When you get that high, you got to be a Mason or a Knight of Columbus, and I'm not sure because. Back in the day, I wasn't paying much attention to uh, Romney because Coleman was getting most of his. Well, was it Romney or was it uh, Jimmy Carter that helped? Coleman? I remember Romney too. It could have been Jimmy Carter. I remember Romney, Romney, and I remember a Ford. The Ford was helping him a lot too. Yeah, Ford is the only. Ford is the only president. No, I, I don't know. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about that Ford. I'm talking about the, the uh, Ford uh, automotive Ford guy. Oh, 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 uh, yes. Uh, I'm looking at Henry him. I know Ford you know. Jr. Henry Ford uh, Jr. Yeah. It, it was more of the Fisher. It was a Fisher body that uh, Coleman was uh, was with. But anyway, you're right. You're right. But I, 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 I'm trying to f formulate the question. They wanted to know what effect did, did they have on Coleman or what was it that Coleman had on them? Or how did they well, raise they that say, can, They say, can you please analyze how George and Matt Romney destroyed the state of Michigan? Oh, the state of Michigan. Whoa. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I well... I got to I got to look at it because you know all the time Coleman was in office Coleman always said the way of Detroit is the way of Michigan 
If Detroit don't buy it, it's not going to work in Michigan. And I always uh, praised him for that comment because it was true. So did, did, did Romney uh, destroy Michigan? I'm not convinced that he did. Um, behind, I know Engler did a hell of a job in, in destroying oh, Michigan. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Um, and then I know the, the one before Engler, him and Coleman, the one before Engler, him and Coleman wasn't talking, or was it? Was it? I can't remember who it was. I'd have to look at all of that. Tell them I'll take a look yeah. at it and see if it's worth dealing with, and we'll go from there. Okay? Because to me, wasn't Romney in during that time when, uh, well, I know he was in with uh, Coleman, but it was like he was the only one that was, when everybody else said turn the lights off and, and uh, prove faith, uh, the, the president cut funds yeah. off, and it was yeah. Romney and, and the and the corporate uh, Ford Motor Company that kind of like you say Fisher. They the ones stepped in. Yes, they're I the ones that. I couldn't see it wrong, but that's what that's how they projected it. Yes, yes, they sure did. So anyway, let me uh, take a look at it. And, uh, okay. So we should and this be is a good song to make trees of green. All right. Yeah. Red roses too. Have a good evening. And uh, I'll talk to you uh, soon, okay? Peace okay, and love. Okay, and I already said peace and love. And I sent you that uh, with the guy in the chat room was talking about.